Behold, the revolutionary Raspberry Pi single board computer. Wait, that's not a Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi. So then what's this? This is the Libre computer board AML S905X-CC, or better known as Le Potato. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be taking a look at Le Potato, and from now on I'm just going to call it the potato. I'm not going to add the, the L-E in the front of it every single time. But, so this is the potato, right? It's a single board computer, just like the Raspberry Pi. In this case, this is the Raspberry Pi 3. And if you look at the two of them, other than the color of the, uh, <laughs> the board itself, they look pretty darn similar. And that's because this thing was basically made to be a little bit better than this Raspberry Pi 3. Now, if you've been paying attention to the Raspberry Pi uh, stuff for the last couple of years, you know it came out, it was an awesome single board computer, lots of different uses for it, you can throw it in an arcade machine, you can use it as a small computer, you could use it as a server for your 3D printer, all kinds of stuff. And then we had some supply chain issues and they couldn't make them quick enough or cheap enough or they couldn't get the parts or whatever. And uh, they kind of disappeared or got real expensive for a while. So we had the Raspberry Pi 3, we had the Raspberry Pi 4, and then it just got tough. So along comes this guy, and I just happened to find it on Amazon, 35 bucks. It's basically almost identical to the Raspberry Pi 3. We'll go over a couple differences. It's supposed to be just like the 3B. It's supposed to be a little bit stronger, a little bit less power, so a little bit more efficient at least. And it's got 2 gigs of RAM instead of 1 gig. So it's, it's supposed to basically take over the reins for this Raspberry Pi 3B. Now, we know that the Raspberry Pi 4 is out there. It's stronger. It's more expensive. Yada, yada, yada. We understand that. But sometimes you don't need stronger, more expensive. You don't need that extra power. You just need something that's going to run. And if we can't find these, but we can find these, let's see what we can do with it. So in this video, we're going to fire this thing up with a couple different operating system images. There's about nine different images that they have support for on their website. And I downloaded a couple of them. We're going to check out some Linux stuff. And then my favorite, we're going to check out some retro gaming on it. So let's take a little closer look of the hardware itself. And then we'll get this thing fired up. So I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of specs. If you know what a Raspberry Pi 3B can do, then this can probably do it as well. But if we just take a look at it, it's, it's made to be exactly the same uh, format. So all the ports are in the same spots. We get the HDMI port. We get the audio port. We've got the, the uh, power input, which again, this one stuck with the micro USB. It didn't go up to a uh, USB-C, but we'll forgive it for that. We've got the Ethernet port and four USBs here. This model comes with a 2.4 gig uh, Wi-Fi adapter already, so that came with it. It's got the same GPIO and 40-pin header, which I think is uh, it says it's pinned out exactly the same as the Raspberry Pi 3. The uh, one major difference, or the one, I guess, difference that, that stands out is this IR receiver on the back here. So when you're putting it in a case, uh, that may be a tiny bit of an issue, but I think when I put it in the case the first time, it may have bent it back uh, like half a millimeter, but that was about it. Now, it does the case does block this IR receiver, so if you need the IR receiver, you'll have to accommodate for that. But um, regular Raspberry Pi 3 cases will work for it. Now the other glaring difference that you can see is this comes with a pretty decent heat sink already pre-installed. No need to buy an additional heat sink and stick it on there with some little gummy tape type stuff. This thing's got a pretty decent one already installed and it's ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this thing into a Raspberry Pi case just to show you how it fits and then uh, after that we'll hook it up to some stuff. So here it is all packaged up in a little Raspberry Pi 3 case and like I said all the ports line up exactly even the little SD card uh, slot there it's got some uh, LEDs here on the back side that will light up but everything just lines up perfect except for like I said there is the IR receiver back here um, you, you just can't see it 
but you should have no problem at all finding a Raspberry Pi 3 case for these things. They are plentiful. And then the same thing with the uh, power supply. Since it is micro USB, you should have no problem finding one of those. And the good thing is you don't have to get a silly adapter for your HDMI. It's a full-size HDMI port, unlike the Raspberry Pi 4, and uh, you'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and hook up some power, hook up some video to this, and I'll see if I can get this running through my capture card. All right, so here I got it all hooked up. I got an HDMI cable going to my capture card. I've got a power input, and actually I've got a little adapter here that gives you a power button. This is super handy for these Raspberry Pi devices because otherwise you have to keep on plugging and unplugging this. There is no power button on here. So if you want to shut it down and then turn it back on, you got to kind of unplug the cable and plug it back in. So this is just a little USB, uh, micro USB power switch. And uh, if you're going to use one of these boards, grab one of those. I'll put a link down in the description below. And then I've got just a little USB dongle here for a mouse and keyboard. So let's switch over to the capture card. And the first image I've got running here, this is Raspbian. So this is just a Debian version of Linux with a uh, kind of optimized for Raspberry Pi. Now, I'm not a Linux expert by any means. I've used it a couple times, I'm not, but I'm not an expert. So I'm kind of uh, not impressed with this one. It's got a very like early 2000s look of Linux to it. You know, it reminds me a lot of the early days of like Red Hat and stuff like that. So it's got, you know, some of the basics, but uh, it's not super, super cool. And you got to remember, this is running on a $35 computer, right? This is not a super computer. So I loaded up uh, Big Buck Bunny here on YouTube, expecting to play it in 4K. And uh, it, it just did not <laughs> play 4K at all. It didn't play uh, 1080p at all. I think right now it's scaled down to 360p. <laughs> it's scaled all the way down to 360p. It was even having trouble at 480p. Now, I want to assume that this is just a uh, an issue with this particular operating system. Looking at the website for this, they've got a pretty pretty good uh, you know question and answer form type place, and they said that they recommend uh, LibreELEC or CoreELEC which are uh, two, two different images that I didn't download. So I thought this Raspbian would be a good test. I'm not super impressed with it. So we're going to go ahead and uh, shut this thing down. And the next one we're going to test out is going to be good old Ubuntu. All right, so here we are running now Ubuntu or Ubuntu, however you pronounce it. And it's a much prettier interface. We'll look at that in a second. Uh, but the video just is not not uh, playing any better at all. So let's go ahead and pause this here for a second and look at the rest of the uh, operating system image itself. And you can see it has a much more modern look to it. It's actually got like an application type pop-up window and it came pre-installed with Firefox and it's a lot more modern uh, software was pre-installed on this. So uh, it's a better looking image and again we're using a $35 computer so if it doesn't play 4k video uh, I'm not too upset about it because I've got a phone in my pocket that plays 4k video just fine so let's go ahead I'm going to test one more thing out while this is still running I'm going to unplug that Wi-Fi dongle that came with it because I was using the same Wi-Fi for both uh, tests and I'm going to plug in an Ethernet cable just to see if that does anything for the performance of the uh, the streaming and I'll check right back with you. All right, so I just switched out the USB adapter that was a Wi-Fi adapter for a ethernet cable, and it doesn't seem that that was the, the issue at all. The video wasn't playing any better, and out of curiosity, I've loaded up uh, just a regular old speed test, and it uh, got about three and a half meg down, where I usually get uh, about 100 down and 100 up here at home and it kind of locked up completely trying to do the upload test so this is probably just too much to ask for this little tiny computer and you got to remember it's running off of an sd card this operating system is running off an sd card so i know they do make adapters for like nvme drives that may help a little bit 
but I just think that this is asking too much out of this little computer. So that doesn't concern me too much because the third image that I'm about to show you is the one that I'm most excited about. So we're going to stop playing around with this garbage and we're going to load up this third image. All right, so finally something worth showing off on this small board computer. And this right now is running Batocera, which is a, obviously, looks like a, a, a gaming emulator image. So this uh, image you can download and uh, install to an SD card. And it comes preloaded with a couple, uh, couple example games and a couple ports. Probably everything that's just, uh, you know, shareware or freeware. And then you can load your own stuff on it if you've got your own stuff. And this, let me tell you, was incredibly easy. It was almost ridiculously easy setting this up. So I've plugged a controller into it, just an Xbox controller, right into a USB port. And I did a quick uh, configuration on the controller to map all the buttons. And it just works perfect. And I did uh, test out loading some of my own games on here. So a couple versions of Tetris on in the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System, and they run perfectly. And just because he's in the zeitgeist right now, I had to load up some primetime NFL, my favorite, probably one of my favorite games on the Sega Genesis. Uh, gotta, gotta love playing some Deion Sanders uh, football. Primetime, baby. So this thing came pre-installed with these bezels. You can see the bezels on the side because obviously this is a 16 by nine uh, capture that I'm running right now. And it's a four by three aspect ratio game. So all the systems have these bezels hooked up already. And like I said, super easy. You can either log into this thing, you know, over your network, like SSH into it if you know how to do that. Or you can just take a USB drive with, uh, you know, whichever game files you have, plug it right in and use the built-in file manager to copy the files over. And then it's got options. Let me go back to the main screen here. It's got options to go ahead and scrape. If you've got this hooked up to the internet and it'll scrape and get all the box art and everything set up for you. And I didn't even show you like for example, on this primetime football, it is showing just a little video clip. You know, as soon as you hover over it, it'll start playing something. But if you hold down your select button, you can go into the game media and see all the different, you know, box art and stuff like that that it had. And you can even go find similar games. You can uh, change up the metadata if it if it scraped the wrong information, you can go back and scrape it manually, you know, each individual file. So like I said, this thing was super easy to set up. And I've used a lot of Raspberry Pis in uh, different arcade projects over the years. And I can tell you that this Batocera is going to be in my next uh, project for sure. Like this actual little computer also. So I'm glad that I did find a use for it. You know, $35 for running this kind of thing is a, a no-brainer. It didn't excel too well at playing the, the YouTube videos, but like I said, that's that's not the uh, intended purpose for me. So I'm definitely going to get some use out of it by setting it up. So stay tuned to the channel. Next arcade project I get, I'm going to throw this thing in there. So I guess it's time for uh, some final thoughts on this little $35 potato computer. And it's kind of funny calling it that, but for 35 bucks. You really can't go wrong for this type of application. If you're looking for something to replace your desktop computer, obviously this is not going to be it. It's a little too underpowered for uh, everyday use, but for the very specific purposes that people use these Raspberry Pis for, like for example, like a Pi hole, which is kind of a uh, like an ad blocker, or something for your home automation, or something for your 3D printer, or in this case, something for playing retro games on, then it's perfect. This isn't going to play... You know, you're not going to be able to emulate PlayStation 3 games on something like this, but for all the, uh, the old school 8-bit, 16-bit type stuff, it's going to be perfect. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. Also, subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. I'll, I'll be doing more projects with this thing in the future. If you want to see any kind of specific test run, then let me know down in the comments below. 
and I'll try to hook you up with that. So go check this thing out at Amazon, 35 bucks, you know, one or two day shipping. You don't have to wait for some weird website to get you a Raspberry Pi. Go ahead and grab one of these. Now, it's not going to be 100% compatible with everything uh, Raspberry Pi, but it's going to do most of the things that you want it to do. So that's going to wrap this video up. Thank you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.